So many of you may know that I went through a challenge with cancer, journey with cancer. And when I first started recording this and kind of keeping a journal, I didn't realize I was journaling, I thought I was keeping notes. Um, I titled it The Journey. And I've learned some things along the way, and um, I want to share a couple of them with you. So it, was, it started in May of, of 2016. Um, a melanoma patch was found on my back, and it's one of those spots that's low enough that I really couldn't see it, and my wife said, hey, you better go get that checked. It's a dark spot back there, and I didn't think much of it because I'd been into the dermatologist from time to time to have you know, skin stuff done. And he looked at it and he said, yeah, it doesn't look very good, so let's go ahead and get it checked out. And so they did. They sent it into the lab, and they came back and said, yeah, it's, it's melanoma, and it's deep enough beyond the skin depth that it has to be removed surgically. I can't do it here at the dermatologist level. He said, but we caught it early. You should be fine. Uh, we're going to get you set up for surgery. And so I went and met my surgeon, and he's a young guy. Great. I get, I get the young surgeon. So that, but that was reassuring because I knew, oh, can't be that serious if they give me the young guy. And this was good. This was good. And, and so he said, you ain't got it early. We, we should be fine. So they did all the things they needed to do to get me ready for surgery. and, and a few days later, I get the phone call and to come on in and chat with him about the findings. And he said, you know, we, we got it all. You know, so now there's a nice little seven-inch reminder across my back. And uh, he said, but it has moved. We, we removed a couple of lymph nodes where they thought it might go if it had been moving. And they found melanoma cancer cells in my lymph system. And I don't know if you know much about the lymph system, but it goes through your entire body. And that's how when cancer gets, in my case, from the skin to inside, it can go anywhere. And melanoma, I learned, goes to the backbone. It'll just tear it up. It goes to your eyes, that brain. And it'll just keep moving until it's torn enough of your body up that you will get, you'll die. So I'm looking it up now. Now I get home and I'm Googling, right? So Google, right, is like your best friend and at the same time, your worst. So I want to find these statistics that are just crazy. And I'm this optimistic, positive up guy, and I'm now feeling like a ton of bricks has just hit me. So I reached out to a few friends, and Kathy Gove sent me a scripture that she had been studying. It was from a devotion. Interesting how she was just going through it. And it was from 2 Samuel 22, and it's where David is praising God. He's looking back on his deliverance from Saul. And he's praising God for this deliverance. That he had protected him from his enemies, and that God is, was, and is victorious, and that we should give glory and take comfort in him. So I printed this out. All right? I've got this now by my bedside, because at the middle of the night, while I'm thinking all these positive things and saying, yeah, we're going to whip this thing during the day, at night, at the end of the bed, when everybody else was asleep and it's dark, I would swear to you that I saw the Grim Reaper pointing his little ugly, bony finger at me, saying, you, you're next. I don't care how strong you are, sooner or later that's going to play with your head. And I'd get that 2 Samuel 22 out, and I would read it. But it wasn't me reading David talking about thanking God for his protection from Saul. It was me praising God. And I did that over and over. I had to reprint it. Okay, okay, it got to the point where I couldn't read it anymore. And I was fairly active on, on Facebook, and so I started to share my journey digitally. And not only everybody here. And so in July of 2016, when I learned this, I posted my first prayer request for this journey that I was on. And 77 people responded. Now, these aren't just people who casually, I mean, they responded. They were active, actively praying for me. Over the next three months, in an effort to contain the cancer, Two more surgeries were needed. We removed all of the lymph nodes in my right groin area. Not fine. Up down into the into the lower in my upper leg. And 
I'm gearing up now post-surgery for my first PET scan. I'm going to see if they can find anything in me. This is a few months after the surgery. And I'm getting ready to write another post. You know, please pray, if, you know, I'm going to have another, you know, another, another test. I want to get you know, positive results, obviously. And in the middle of writing this thing up, I very clearly hear God ask me, don't you trust me? And it's like, I'm not supposed to ask for prayer? Really? No, I didn't quite get what he was saying. You know, the focus needed to be on God. So the test came out fine. The test came out great. They couldn't find anything. And I did post, after it was done, the celebration of, hey, I just went through this test. I wanted to let everybody know who's been praying along with me. And how many here? 184 people celebrated. 184. Yeah. Yeah. So now fast forward a year later. Sue, my wife, and I are in our, on our anniversary trip. And I wake up one morning, and I look in the mirror, and I see five spots across my chest. And there's probably as many spots down my right leg. And now these aren't just little flat spots. These are like, they're not like freckles. These are arched up, black, nasty looking things. It's like, what the heck are those? Well, I knew what they were. Next morning, there was another 10 or so down my leg. By, by the time my leg was done, there were probably 20 or so of these small blisters, cancer tumors, migrating across my body. Oncologists said, now this is stage four, it's moving. And they took some checks to see where it was from, and they could tell it was all from the original site. It wasn't different. It was the same melanoma moving. So I'm back to Google again, because they said stage four. What's that mean? The American Cancer Society reports that melanoma is an aggressive and highly metastatic, meaning moving, highly metastatic disease. Metastatic mel melanoma is a fatal disease with a rapid systemic dissemination. The five-year survival rate is less than 15%. So here's this positive up guy, another ton of bricks. Melanoma does not respond to chemotherapy, I learned. And there are some immunotherapies that have been found that slow it down, but that's at best all it does. The oncologist said there were some recent studies, brand new at the time, that said, you know, if we combine two of these immunotherapies together, like a cocktail, let's put them both together in you, uh, they've been found to be more effective than just either one of them alone. And so I agreed to a six-month, 10-infusion regimen. 166 friends lifted me up in prayer. 166. So I was a week away from my third infusion. Had two of them down. Everything's going fine. About a week before the third one. Oh yeah, there's fun days. My thyroid and my liver failed because of the immunotherapy. Um, I was running 105 temperature, throwing up, freezing. I was shaking so bad. I remember shaking so bad that I couldn't have dialed 911 if I'd wanted to. It's like my whole body was just rejecting everything. And my Sue grabbed me, put me, pushed me into the car, rushed me to the emergency. So I was there for a couple of days as they restabilized my body. And I was down to 139 pounds at this point. This was probably the, the lowest. And it's interesting that I wasn't you know, what's going through my mind at this point is I'm not afraid of dying because I, I saw the writing on the wall. You know, I, I see what direction this is going. But what weighed on me was that I didn't want my family, my son, my daughters, my wife, to see their husband and their dad shriveling up and filled with tubes and painkillers. As that is just unbelievable sadness. That was the emotional, and that's where I was. So we pressed deep into healing prayer, deep. My wife and children prayed over me. Hundreds of friends through Facebook. Every pastor and prayer team member prayed for me here. 
Sometimes I just walk up and I'd get near somebody being prayed for just so I could like pick it up, you know. <laughs> Osmosis. The youth that we'd seen grow up, my daughters were part of it. You see them grow up and you pray that, that they're going to grow up and, you know, things are going to be good. To have them praying over you, my daughter leading in prayer over you. So we did that for a year. Praying, hoping, pleading, 2 Samuel 22, over and over again. Fast forward a year. I go into my dermatologist and I say, hey, I've got, I've got these spots. They're still there. Now they've gone down by now. Some of them have turned gray. So I say, hey, can we have some of these? Can we get a couple of these checked? I'd really like to find out what's going on with them. And he said, sure. So we took a nasty kind of looking one off my collarbone. Another one off of my right thigh, and we sent it in. He sent it into two different labs because he wanted to make sure of the outcome. Went to Kaiser and UC Davis, and he called me about a week later. I remember I remember where I was driving on my way home when I'm listening to his message, and he said the findings are consistent with complete regression of metastatic melanoma. Now, I know what I want that to mean. Right? Complete regression of metastatic melanoma. Those are a lot of big words. It's kind of it's like, English, please. I'm calling my friends. I'm crying as I'm listening to it again. I'm, I'm calling my friends. Yeah, they're crying too. I get home. Where do I go? Google. <laughs> Got it. I find a report that says there's only 76 well documented, well documented, <laughs> well documented cases of complete regression of metastatic melanoma. 76! And complete regression of metastatic melanoma means they can't find any evidence that cancer was ever there. Aww. The only reason I know is... <laughs> the only reason they knew it was there was because of the medical reports, not because of what they found. So they find that there's only 76 well-documented cases. This is out of, I just looked this up a little bit ago, somebody asked from the first service. There's about 100, 137,000 cases of melanoma annually. There's only, did I say 77? I'm sorry, 76 known cases of well-documented complete regression. And so I'm thinking, God, 77? I have seven's a good number, right? right? <laughs> Two of them has to be really good. And so I'm making coffee one morning, and I'm praying to God, what do I need to do? Not you, God. But God, what do you That's right. You're right. It's like, it's like, what do I need to do to be 77? What needs to happen? And as clear as I even heard just a moment ago, I hear God say, isn't what I've done enough? I make my coffee, and I back away. Thank God. Forget about 77 meal. Yeah. Fast forward to a month ago. If you were here, you heard Lana March talk about her miraculous healing of cancer. She had called Sue and I to go pray with her a couple of weeks before this, and we had. And she knew because of my journey, this was something that was going to be close to my heart. And we prayed over her. We prayed with her. We cried with her. We hoped with her. And two weeks later, she gets up and tells her story of the miraculous healing cancer gone and everybody here if you were here was celebrating remember that yeah. and i remember i'm celebrating with it and for a moment i reach out to god and i say ken can i hear from you that i'm healed i know how i feel can i just hear you say it i had a vision i'm walking in a path i'm following jesus he's in front of me and he looks over his left shoulder and he asks, what did you just ask me? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to say, really, he didn't, but what did you just ask me? And I was like, all right, now I'm committed. I got to, am I healed? Because he's, he's walking again. So he stops again, looks over his left shoulder, and he says, do you trust me? Hmm. Well, of course I do. And he waves his hand, he smiles, and he waves his hand and says, then just follow me. 
Now, I thought for a while that this was something that my brain kind of made up. I was thinking through it, you know, made this little story up. And what happened is when he waved, I saw something. Because when I think of Jesus, we all have our images of who, what Jesus might look like. And my image of Jesus would have been a pre-crucifixion Jesus that the disciples would have spent time with. When he waved his hand, I saw the marks of the crucifixion. Wow. That was clearly a message from God saying, you're following the resurrected Christ. So what have I learned? We need to trust and keep our eyes on Jesus, not the storm. And there will be storms, valleys. We need to stay in community, fellowship. Remember all those people that reached out along the way? I cannot imagine going through this by myself. Couldn't have done it. And from these two, I need to be aware, we could be aware of opportunities to share the kingdom, to share Jesus' love, to pray for others. I remember one time where friends stopped in the hallway at work prayed over and put hands on me in the hallway at work. They paused their life. They stopped their life for a moment in the craziness and the busyness that all of us experience. It said, we're going to share the love of Jesus right now and we're not going to move on until we're done. Because that commitment, while it may feel like a little prayer to you, it may make all the difference to them. <laughs>